Hey beautiful people, my name is Aura and welcome to another episode of Aura on the Fly where we're all about just, you know, talking, you know, talk about current affairs, talk about life, talk about how we can just live, you know, purposefully. So that's what this channel is about. However, today I will be talking about a topic that honestly we need to talk about it, okay? And that is about the NSARS movement currently happening in Nigeria. Now, y'all know that I stan. <laughs> I stand for Nigeria. You guys know this. I really do. If you have not watched my relocation video to Nigeria, I'm going to post it somewhere here. But, I mean, as someone who lived there for two and a half years and recently just relocated back, what is happening is at the very hem of my heart. It is tugging at all my heartstrings. And honestly, my whole body wants to be in Lagos right now. <laughs> because I'm just like, finally... Finally, we are waking up. We are waking up and honestly, I didn't think it was going to be this soon But my heart is so proud. I am so proud I am so proud of everybody that has been out there putting out, you know Risking their lives daily donating spreading the word. I am proud. Okay. I am a proud Nigerian youth. Okay, really 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 proud. Okay, so before we get started I just Felt the need to do a brief history i apologize i'm looking down on my phone i didn't want to mess up the name or anything else that i need to talk about but i just wanted to kind of talk about a brief history about stars when it started who founded it and why it was you know why it was started and what we're dealing with right now so sars is the special anti-robbery squad of the of the nigerian police force um, this unit was basically created in the late night late 1992 by commissioner simon danladi and the whole um idea behind it was to be able to go after armed robbery so there was a period of time in nigeria where like Every other day, there was some there was some armed robbery occurring. I mean, it still happens, but I remember growing up like it was crazy because these people, these armed robbers, would literally send letters to our neighborhood, telling us that they were coming and there was nothing we could do. It was wild, you know. Tell us there was nothing we could do, and everybody would be scared out of their, you know, out of their mind. So this unit really was created as a unit of the police of the Nigerian police force to combat those armed robbers right so the intention was good intention was great however this unit has become rogue okay i personally believe that the nigerian police force cannot control this unit anymore first of all they don't wear uniforms so you know a SARS guy by literally the arms that he's carrying regular citizens aren't allowed to carry um firearms so you typically know somebody within the force because they're carrying a firearm um or they're an umbrella <laughs> okay but typically you know they're carrying a firearm so they're not you know they're not in uniform and they literally are just you know they're everywhere on the on the streets harassing people i mean and typically they harass you because you are driving a good car or you look good or you know you're carrying a laptop or you're carrying an iphone you're driving a benz you're driving a toyota i mean it's crazy like <laughs> it's crazy i mean i'm thinking i'm over here just thinking about the fact that you know, in this side of the world, in America where I live now, children are literally being millionaires. They're, you know, they're making money on YouTube reviewing toys and they're making so much money. And so you tell that kind of person, you know, that he cannot, when they grow up, they cannot buy the luxuries of life because, you know, they're going to be seen as somebody who is into crime. Like, does that even make sense? Like, it, it doesn't make sense, okay? So they literally stop people on the road. You know they are they have been accused of raping women of extorting them of kidnapping them of torturing women of, of torturing people illegally detaining people killing people okay and now we're just tired of it like we are tired of it so i remember a week ago or so i was just on twitter and i was seeing you know um a couple of accounts recruiting not recruiting fundraising money for a woman who just recently got shot in her mouth by this same unit right so they were raising money for her um to cure you know to help her get treatment in the hospital because this SARS guys had shot a lady in her mouth for demanding what her what why they were why she was being arrested again when they typically arrest you is for no reason <laughs> like they li it's it's literally for no reason so that's all i saw going on twitter 
and then before i knew what was going on there had been like the, the protest started and so i'm like okay so who started the protest nobody knows who started the protest like it literally just felt like and i may be wrong but it just felt like people had just had it okay it just started in different parts of the nation from lagos to abuja to enugu to Oweri, in different parts of the nation and what's so different about this protest is the fact that it isn't being pushed by an organization or or some form of leadership you know what i mean like everybody it just comes to the point where now everybody's just tired we're just tired of it okay we don't we don't want to hear it we're just tired of it so i mean in response to our protests we the government um as in their usual the nigerian government in their usual manner instead of them to listen to what people are complaining about their first instinct was to go ahead and say okay we're going to we're going to end SARS okay we're going to end SARS but instead of us ending SARS we're going to start another group called called SWAT and it's like first of all this end SARS thing has been happening for a while okay so even though it just kind of started again about two weeks ago this has been an ongoing campaign for a while because the atrocities of this group of this rogue group honestly it's it's a lot like I've seen some really graphic images on on social media and I want to share it but honestly it's very triggering so I'm not gonna share it um, but they have done they have they have they have they have done a lot uh, it's it's a lot it's a lot from women coming out sharing their stories of being raped uh, it's just children it, it's a lot it's I don't I don't even want to get emotional but it's just a lot so while this um campaign has been going on for a long time like i said it's been going on you know these people have done a lot um again it just restarted again about two weeks ago and you know like i said it just started in a sense where it was like sporadic protests going on around and in the night in the typical nigerian government's fashion ig which is the inspector general of police came out and said okay oh yeah you know we're going to end sars you know we've heard your guys your protests we're going to end sars and they came out with a list of five things which i'm going to read out that they were going to do in a way to let you know the protesters know that they have heard um and they're going to take this issue seriously so i'm going to read the five things that the IG of police signed and said that they were going to do. The first thing they said they were going to do was they were going to dissolve the special anti-robbery squad across all 36 states with immediate effects, right? Sounds like, I'm going to keep reading this, but you know, it sounds, sounds like, okay, they're hearing us, okay. The second thing, this is where they now really just lost people. All officers and un all officers and men serving in the unit will be redeployed to other police commands, formation, and units. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> so basically, what they said was, yes, we're going to squash SARS, but we're just now going to put them back into the police force and other units, sir. I mean, just because I wear a dress or I, you know, or I remove my glasses doesn't mean I've changed. You know what I'm saying? Like. I'm still the same person. <laughs> I'm still the same person. Just because I changed does not mean just because you give me a change of attire does not mean I've changed. I'm still, the, I'm still the same person. That's essentially what they said here. Which obviously we're not stupid. Like I mean, this government really has taken Nigerians just for well, they they really really just yeah. They I, let me let me keep reading. No, so number three. Now said, a new policing arrangement for tackling the offenses of armed robbery and other violent crimes will be unveiled to the public soon. Number four, um, a citizens and strategic stakeholders forum will be launched to provide an avenue for citizens to regularly interface and advise the police authority on issues such as in, the general public. Okay. And then number five, to deal with the report of crimes committed against citizens, an investigative team will be constituted, which will include civil society organization and culprits will be punished. Again, sounds like, you know, they were trying to do the right thing. But just knowing the history of the Nigerian government, all of this thing is what we used to call audio. Do you know what audio means? It means that you say it, but you don't do it. You don't follow through. So because we've had this audio for a long time, 
Nigerian youth were not going to have it again. We're like, no. First of all, this is not the first time that SARS, that people, that y'all have said that SARS has been disbanded. In fact, in 2017, there was an end SARS movement that actually happened, and the government came out to say that they have disbanded SARS. In 2018, the same thing. 2019, the same thing. Now, 2020, people are telling us that you've disbanded SARS. How how is it that people keep disbanding these people and they just all of a sudden they just keep cropping up out of nowhere? So obviously they're not doing anything about it. And so Nigerians are like, nah, bruh. We've heard this before. We know what this is about. No, y'all not gonna just come out with that kind of thing and and just and just feel like we're gonna buy it. It's not going to happen. So we came out with our own demands because you people know how to do this, that be. We too, we know how to do this. So we came out with our own. We said, number one, so this is our own demands now. Number one, immediate release of all arrested protesters. Now, isn't this crazy? We're protesting peacefully, by the way. Matter of fact, this protest have not been violent. I'm going to put some pictures here for you guys to see the level at, at the, the level of organization that this protest has had. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but this protest has not been violent. If there's any violence that has been taking place, is the government sending people to disband them? It's it's a police using brutal force to disband peaceful protests, and why? So, and they've been also arresting people. In fact, do you know what's so crazy? I'm sorry, I'm just like I feel like I'm going all over the place, but do you know what's so crazy? The fact that right in front of our eyes during one of one of the protests one day that they were protesting a guy was arrested um during the protest and the police in a day or two i can't remember now framed that guy for killing another policeman the only saving grace that this guy had was that this incident was caught on video guys <laughs> That's the only saving grace that this man had was that this incident was caught on video. That's how he was able to be released. Can you imagine? They pulled somebody off the street, framed that person immediately for the murder of another policeman. This is the police force we're working with, guys. Okay. So that was our first demand was to, you know, number one, immediate release of all arrested protesters. Number two, justice for all deceased victims of police brutality and appropriate compensation for families i mean honestly at this point we're asking for like the barest minimum this is the barest minimum like to show you how far the system has you know ha has fallen we're now asking for the barest minimum in typical societies or environment isn't these things they usually do so why is the difference in nigeria why like, why? Why is the difference? Like, what's wrong with us? You don't understand. Like, why is the difference? So, we really, we're asking for the barest minimum. Okay. So, number three, we requested that setting up an independent body to oversee the investigation and persecution of all reports of police re misconduct. And we wanted this done within 10 days. Okay. So, number four, in line with the new police act, psychological evaluation and retaining to be confirmed by an independent body of all disbanded SARS members, SARS officers rather, before they can be redeployed. And number five, increase police salaries so that they are adequately compensated for protecting lives and property of citizens. I mean, okay, so as, as, as much as we want to be angry at, that, at the police department and the SARS unit, we have to also tackle the root cause, which is the fact that these guys are actually not compensated. I mean, I was, the, I'm going to try and find the picture that I saw on Twitter for the salaries of the Nigerian police force. These guys, I think the lowest um, salary is 9,000 Naira a month. Or oh, just to put this into context, 9,000 Naira a month is less than $30 a month. Let, let that just sink in. How is any decent human being supposed to survive on less than $30 a month? This is what is driving these guys into crime. I mean, not to give them any excuse, but you give somebody that is earning $30 a month or less than $30 a month, you give them an armed weapon 
and you tell them not to go on the road and extort citizens, it's going to be hard. Again, this is not excusing what's going on, but I'm just trying to paint a picture for you guys to understand that the rot in the system is deep. How can you pay a policeman, a family man, $30 a month? It's a stipend. It's not stipend now. It can't be stipend. And you expect that man to go home to wife and child on $30 a month and feed himself. You're basically telling that policeman that, the, that how he should get his money is by going on the road and extorting citizens. That's what you're telling that policeman indirectly. So you go on, so you go to Nigeria now and police are stopping you for, and they're, they're asking for bribe, you know, you just give us money. If you, don't, if, you, if, you don't, if, you, if you don't pay us, we're going to frame you and there's nothing that, that can happen to you. How can a policeman say that? How can? How can a policeman literally say that you will waste your life and there's nothing that can happen to you? How many people are in jail right now for crimes they did not commit in Nigeria? Who are at the mercy and the hands of hungry policemen? It's crazy. It's crazy and it's disgusting. So, this is what the NSARS movement is about. And right now, even though we're screaming NSARS, what we're actually screaming is end bad governance. That is it. That is really the root of it. And bad governance because it's not going to end at just SARS. Like right now, we are waking up to the fact that it's not normal for, for a parent to spend their whole life savings to send their children abroad in a country where there's a plethora of universities. But these universities are severely underfunded. And if you attend one of them, the likelihood that that educational system is going to set you back 20 years is high. It's not normal. It's not normal that we don't still have light in 2020. It's not normal that police offices don't have computers. They don't even book criminals. They don't book anybody. So you enter a police cell and there's no system that, you know, says maybe somebody's there or not they don't book anybody they don't even know how to use a computer in 2020 it's not normal these things are the things that the nigerian youth this is what we're protesting against so yes we're saying end SARS, but SARS is literally just a figurative speech of what the nigerian government is to the average nigerian youth honestly speaking it is bad it is bad. The privileged people that think this does not affect them, I'm sorry to tell you, if you live in Nigeria, there's no hiding. God forbid you get into an accident and you only have five minutes. God forbid that you only have five minutes. Your timeline is only five minutes. You think your dual citizenship is going to come and fight for you then? It's not. So really, this fight is for everybody. In fact, the police, even though we are angry at the police department right now, we are fighting for them because we want them to be compensated better. We know that it is wrong for, for a policeman to be any less than $30 a month. While your senators, because they're not mine, <laughs> while your senators are out there earning about $2 million a year. I'm going to find a picture that lists out, if I can, that lists out um, all the things that the senators are compensated for. Furniture, car allowance, excesses, excesses. Why? Why? In America, yeah, a senator earns less than $200,000, I think. And in Nigeria, a senator is earning over $2 million annually. Make it make sense. It does, it does make sense. It doesn't make sense. Okay, so ran over. <laughs> um, I'm going to find pictures that I just kind of pulled off Twitter, social media. Um, for you guys to kind of get a picture of the protest um, happening. I mean, like I said, this the level of organization that this protest has, it, it, it's unmatched. First of all, there is no leader. And the things that we've been able to accomplish in a week or so of this protest, major shout out to the Feminist Coalition, <laughs> major shout out to them because these guys have been working day and night day and night you know people have been donating money to them they have been accountable they have been transparent in a week 
Nigerians, people all over the world, we have given to this cause close to 70 million naira alone. This is not in dollars, this is not pounds, this is not CDs, this is just naira. It is crazy. Ah, oh, before I let before I let you people go, let me even give you another juice. So, you know, obviously we've been raising money, and guess what your central bank of Nigeria is going to do? They block the accounts. Yeah, they block the accounts. So, I mean, as a Nigerian youth, how can I look at my governor or the people in power and say these people have my best interest at heart? They don't. They actually don't. And it's sad. How can we be crowdfunding to sustain protests? And the next move is that the, board, the ruling body of our finances, the Central Bank of Nigeria, is that they would block the accounts and restrict accounts so guess what guys we're now donating in bitcoin yeah because you know you can't touch that <laughs> you can't touch that it's crazy i mean it's it's been wild like this whole thing has just been wild um so major major shout out to them they have been amazing um the accountability we see it we see you guys Working day and night, FK Abudu Mo, all these young women, women are doing amazing things. Um, Adetola, I mean, we've literally created a system in about a week, and it's just been amazing. I'm so proud, so proud of all of you. Um, the protesters, God keep you, God bless you. Please stay safe. I know you know emotions are high right now, but. I believe one of the many tactics that this government is going to use is that they would want to either hijack this protest for their own agenda or cause division. We must not allow that to happen. We must not allow that to happen. We have come too far to give up right now. If we give up right now, it's going to be worse. So please, let's not give up. You know, just know that we that were over here, we are rooting for you guys, truly rooting for you guys. Um, and... We hope that this 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 literally is the beginning of a new Nigeria for all of us. I mean, I feel I I don't know, but I'm I guess I guess I can speak for myself. I'd rather be home than be a second class citizen in another man's country. It's just what it is. You know, there's no place like home. And so for for this to be happening right now, it's just it's just so encouraging. It's just so encouraging. So um I would just like us to also take a moment to just recognize people that have been lost, people that have died, um, even during these protests. I believe that we, um, I believe that about 10 or so people were killed, they were murdered during these protests, even after the disbandment of SARS, um, during these protests. And so I'm going to link their names, you know, um, and I will just like us to just, you know, you know, wherever you are, just pray for their families that God really will comfort them. It can't be easy knowing that the people that are meant to protect you are people literally killing you. Uh, it's 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 going to be a tough one to swallow for this for these families. So please just keep them in your prayers. Also, I have linked up with Tea Springs and I have designed some merch. Um, and the merch is called Sorosuke. And so. <laughs> The lingua, the lingo right now on social media is Sorosoke, which means speak up in the Yoruba language, Sorosoke. Um, and it's literally, it's the way forward. We are the Sorosoke generation, honestly, because we are the generation that has decided that we're not going to be quiet anymore. We're not going to be shut down anymore. We are going to Sorosoke. So I've made some merch. It's really beautiful, if I do say so myself. A hundred percent of all funds raised um with this merch will be donated to sustain the protest um i've listed them down below you'll see them down below i've linked them so please go ahead and you know just purchase it again it's, it's in collaboration with tea springs i don't handle any of the um any of the uh what's it called any of the logistics all i did was design it um and set a price for it um so please you know if you'd like to swag out with the sorosuke um the sorosuke merch go ahead and purchase that and again 100 percent of those 
funds we donated to sustain the protest that is all i have for you guys i hope you know this has kind of enlightened you and just kind of informed you about the things going on right now in nigeria as we speak in regards to the end sars movement the end sars protest um again i'm going to link some pictures after this so make sure you stay back and watch you know just and just so you can see all the things that have been happening um thank you so much for watching if this is your first time here welcome make sure you hit the like subscribe button and please share 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 away we all need to stand in solidarity with nigerians right now they need us okay you guys have a wonderful day um and i'll see you on the flip side Bye.